hey guys welcome back for more final fantasy 15 so today we're gonna start episode arden so come on let's just begin new game kingly clash what is that normal yeah i wonder what's gonna happen here like it's a total mystery to me is it gonna be like his life way way back is it gonna be the main uh the main story our lives there or his life there i mean so let's see okay i haven't turned the empire to shambles and shrouded the world in darkness arden erstwhile healer of those who ailed and now sits atop the lucian throne denied by him by the crystal some two millennia ago so yeah he's alive for a long long time Oh, is the song for the opening ME766? Long ago, there lived a man, blessed by the gods and revered by the people as their savior. His name was Arden Lucis Kylum. And he was to have served as the first king of Lucis. Here we're going way back. Thank you for the two Sundays remain high, with moving motion showing signs of backing down. 734. News, a member of the Border Patrol has been reported MIA since sometime before dawn this morning. The Mr. 766 officer earlier, has been right? identified as 28 So 30 year old years ago? 32 years ago? Although Officer Sapientia allegedly Sapienta. reported for duty at his appointed time, Fellow officers say he disappeared soon after and has not been sighted since. Is it, it is Officer Arden? Sapientia is oh, it's a tall, fair-skinned male and was last seen wearing his border patrol fatigues. Anyone with information on Officer Sapientia's whereabouts are requested to contact the Crown City Police immediately. And now a word from the Public Information Bureau. Today marks the anniversary of the founding of the Kingdom of Lucis. The Founders Day Committee has prepared a number of attractions in honor of this auspicious occasion including a parade around the citadel as well as a statue of the founder king himself all are welcome and encouraged to participate in today's festivities this has been a message from the public information bureau what about you now onto the weather shouldn't you be looking for your buddy today in the crown city we expect mild oh, and sunny no. weather with nothing but blue sky i'm on special the assignment may experience some inclement weather starting in the evening and continuing throughout the night <sighs> that concludes today's news and weather <sighs> Arden Lucis Kylum. <sighs> home sweet home at last. Welcome to the Founders Day Festival. In a moment, the parade will begin making its way through the city. King Regis is scheduled Explore to the Crown in the City. Circling the citadel alongside the statue of the Founder King, Somnus Lucis Kylum. Somnus. So this is the city Somnus built. Built on the back of his own flesh and blood. Just look at them, free of care and unaware of the war beyond their wall. In order to ensure the safety of all festival goers, we ask that you please follow all staff instructions. Vehicular access will also be limited in some areas around the citadel for the festival's duration. Honestly, this city is... It really looks good. It's so big. I wish you could have uh, explored this what on the main game, right? Worry when brick and mortar blind them to the suffering outside? Why venture out into the world when you feel so safe within? <sighs> what a life to live. Oh, 
Oh, yeah. 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 Oh, it, it was delayed. Ifrit! Oh my god! Also, both of them attacked 30 years before the story of the game, right? Or 20 years because uh, yeah, Noctis left for 10. 20, 30. The same. <laughs> hey, just attacked in the past is what I mean. So are we going to be fighting Regis then? Yeah, Regis is still a king, right? Okay, let's see what's happening. Darkness Awakens, Chapter 1. Arden. Oh, Arden. You can't expect me to believe that. <gasps> Aira. Oh, but I do. You have my word. <laughs> well, in that case. <laughs> <sighs> also, this was his life before. You look exhausted, my love. Are you all right? Lorey. <laughs> so she's Luna's ancestor. I am. Hmm. Uh, the gods bless me with a power and a purpose to cure people of what ails them. I must see their will be done. Your devotion shall not go unnoticed. The gods will doubtless be watching over you. Just as I shall be watching over you every step of the way. <laughs> it seems to me the cure for your exhaustion is comprised of two things, one of which is rest. Oh? And the other? <laughs> is me. <laughs> oh, Era, oh, pray be with me always. happened to him so we're gonna see his history angel guard oh look at his hands 721 Also, he was here all this time for a millennia two millennia right this he's year? alive <laughs> Just as the ancient texts told. Oh, verse the L, he's still young. Uh, who? Take him away. Yeah, Versta was very old already. <laughs> when you play the main game, right? Don't touch me. Like 40 years? And it, what date was it today? Or in this one? 720 something, right? 72730, but. Status report. Everything is fine here. Roger that. We'll transport the subject to your location. 
And we'll have the medical team ready as planned. But still, Versal ve looked very old in the other game, on the main game, I mean. What's the situation over there? Uh, Nothing to report. Uh, We're just. Uh, uh. oh. uh. Okay, who killed them? Uh, oh, Royal Guards. Adagio. Adagio. Get back in the cell. No matter what, we can't let that thing off this island. Oh, so they were guarding him. Stop. Cease this. What do you Cease call them again? This. I forgot their name. At once. A glaive, a glaive. Yes, a glaive. What? what? The game is over? What? More royal guards. Attack with your royal arms, hold. Shadow step. That guy again, we killed this guy, right? Demonify an enemy. I'm just shocked at how young Versailles is. <laughs> He's so young here. But so Arden was locked up for two millennia. Why couldn't they escape though, right? Like he's so powerful when Noctis is fighting him. Like we couldn't kill him. Why couldn't he escape? Somnus. Forgive me, brother. What? But His the brother. throne seats only one. Oh! Hera! Uh, gods! No! 
It's like a horror movie. So Arden was good back then and his brother was the bad one. Arden Azunia, Chief Bisithia would like to see you. <sighs> Magitech Research Facility. Might as well head out. Verse the L. Let's go to the left side. Uh, I dare say this outfit wasn't tailor made. <laughs> no, you were asleep. You were stuck there for two millennia. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> Chief Besitis Journal. Come, have a seat. Cold, do you? Are you enjoying your stay? No. You've been asleep for years. Learning to appreciate the waking world will take time. Perhaps I can help enlighten you while we dine. Okay, ask about time. How long has it been since you brought me here? 204 days. Roughly oh, seven months or so. Seven months Then already? again, the Lucians had you locked away in that prison for nearly two millennia. I'd be more surprised if you hadn't lost all concept of time. You must loathe those Lucians for what they did to you. <sighs> Ask about me. Was your examination of me a fruitful one? Oh yes, you've proven far more fascinating than expected. <laughs> no wonder they kept you locked away. To think the powers of a demon could dwell within the heart of a man, it's incredible. The Star Scourge doesn't sap your life force. It gives you more. Your cells can regenerate themselves, and you can demonify other life forms as well. There's no doubt you a are monster. not a monster, a marvel. <laughs> I can't wait to unravel all your mysteries. Ask about the food. What is this food? Meat. Cloned in this facility. D cloned? We cultivated somatic cells, used them as donors to fuse the nucleus transplant cells to the recipient oocytes, and then we- Enough! I've no ear for the ramblings of a lunatic. <laughs> what is it you want from me, anyhow? What about me interests you so? You said it yourself, didn't you? You were chosen by the gods. And frankly, with powers like yours, I'd say you're nearly a god in your own right. We need those powers that you possess. With your strength on our side, we could finally put an end to the gruesome war with Lucis. You too must desire the fall of the kingdom that cast you into exile. <sighs> My desires are all in the past. 
The man who wronged you may have died long ago, but his descendants live on to this day. Surely you must bear them some feelings of ill will. My feelings are none of your concern. Follow. Come along. Verstel. <laughs> it's weird though, his voice is the same. Hmm, I wonder what really is the story. Like, what really happened back then. This is the fruit of my labor. A small portion of it, that is. I envy you. A human life is too short to truly understand all there is to know about the world. Go on, have a look. Do watch your step, won't you? Oh. What is this, demons? Demons were first officially recognized as a new species roughly 200 years ago. According to ancient texts, however, humans have suffered from a parasitic plague wrought by the demons for upward of two millennia. Demonification is caused by a mutant strain of Plasmodia that takes root in living creatures and changes their cellular structures. Infected creatures begin to disperse miasmal particles, the spread of which is known as the Star Scourge. Okay, basic character. This model is a replica made from plaster poured into a demon-shaped cavity discovered deep underground. Demons sublimate when their vital functions cease, so this particular specimen must have vaporized after the mud around it had already solidified. Scientists believe this subject burrowed into the earth in order to shield itself from the light of the sun. The Undying Prisoner. Adagium. That is what the Lucians call the monster they imprisoned for 2,000 long years. His powers surpass those of any mortal, and his body is all but impervious to attack. It's no wonder the Founder King sealed him away on the Isle of Angel Guard. He undoubtedly feared this monster might challenge his reign. The capture of Adagium. It seems fortune smiles upon me. Though the Lucians kept him locked away for 2,000 years, I've managed to secure Adagium for myself. The raging winds and stormy seas may have cast all others away, but the waves parted for me that day and led the way. While I've yet to conduct any official research, the potential he proved in combat was most promising. I estimate his powers easily surpass anything mankind has ever seen. Perhaps this streak of luck has just begun. <laughs> Fascinating, isn't it? I want to learn I more. I pored over the ancient texts and found scarcely a mention of you. I barely believed you existed till I saw you with my own eyes. With your help, my research is proceeding smoothly. You have my thanks. This one, this one. The king and his men. At center, we see what I presume to be Lucian warriors and the kings of yore. I've learned a great deal about the first king of Lucis, but I never knew he was second in line. It seems to depict a legend in which the chosen king dispels the darkness. If that's true, does that mean Lucis intends to someday stand above all others? <laughs> Their trifling tales mean nothing in the face of our superior technology. Only we can restore balance to our world. The Oracle? At the top of the painting, we see the Oracle herself. The bloodline of the Oracle is one of the oldest in Eos, originating with Eromirus Flore. Only they possess the power to commune with the gods. This painting depicts the Oracle as some goddess of light herself. She'd doubtless prove a powerful ally if she could be persuaded. Hmm, the Hexatheon. On the sides of the frame, we see the Hexatheon. Conspicuously absent is the traitorous god of fire who started the Great War of Old. Perhaps developing a deeper understanding of the demons will bring us closer to comprehending their divine counterparts. But what if I were to find a way to combine those two disparate elements? 
Okay, the fiends. By my estimation, the grotesque creatures depicted here are likely demons. Could this mean these monsters will be harbingers of the apocalypse? If only we could find a way to harness their power for ourselves. The line of Lucis was chosen to eradicate evil from Eos. And with the divine on their side, how could they fail? This is our world? Jesus Christ, that's a lot it of things. It has been estimated that Eos came into existence some 4.5 billion years ago. Ancient myths tell tales of six protector gods who first alighted upon Eos in the ancient Solheim era. Fossils thought to be remains of the oldest members of the human race were discovered in the Vistala region. Some claim that humans discovered fire in the Sukarp region even before the dawn of the Solheim civilization. According to legend, the fire god Ifrit first bestowed his burning wisdom upon a man who later sat the throne of Solheim. The mechanized civilization of Solheim is presumed to have originated in the Disguy and Klang regions. Exactly when the civilization rose and fell, however, remains the subject of much investigation. The enormous crevasse separating the regions of Klang and Disguy is known as Telpar Crag. It is here that the War of the Astrals is said to have taken place. When Ifrit tried to reduce mankind to ash, the other gods fought back, and some claim this clash caused the collapse of Solheim. It is said that Ifrit, having lost the War of the Astrals, was interred atop the Rock of Rabato. After the war, the ice goddess Shiva allegedly sank into a deep slumber, nestled in the Gorvas Rift of Volup. To this day, no one knows what became of the blade god, Bahamut. The earth god Titan can be seen supporting the meteor at the heart of the disk of Kothis in the sky. As for the storm god Rama, Legend has it he sealed himself away within Fosha Hollow in the sky. The sea goddess Leviathan disappeared in the wake of the war. Some say she swam below the waves and slumbers beneath the city of Altitia. Some 2,000 years ago, the gods granted Somnus Lucis Kylum two gifts, the sacred stone and ring. With these in hand, he founded the kingdom of Lucis. In the centuries since, Lucis has managed to expand its territory while struggling to suppress a parasitic plague. As of ME722, Moore's Lucis Kylum sits the throne as the 112th monarch of his line. Regis Lucis Kylum is King Moore's firstborn son and first in line to succeed his father. Moore's? Okay, imprisonment of Adagio. Angelgard, off the coast of Golden Key, is an uninhabited island that Lucians regard as sacred ground. Ancient texts tell of a monster known as Adagium supposedly sealed away within, but investigations into its existence have yet to provide conclusive evidence. Tenebrae? Soon after the establishment of the kingdom of Lucis, House Fulleray founded the nation of Tenebrae. The Empire began its occupation of Tenebrae in ME359, a move that was initially met with much apprehension. In order to assuage the dissenters, the Empire preserved the Oracle's home of Fenestala Manor. This concession was partially made for political purposes. House Fleuret enjoys close ties with the line of Lucis. The Accordo Protectorate has developed into a bustling league of towns at the heart of maritime trade. In ME606, the Empire won an important battle against the Allied forces of Lucis and Accordo, and in turn, annexed the Protectorate. The country is steeped in traditions and cultures that are incompatible with imperial rule, so the Empire has permitted it a measure of relative political autonomy. Centuries after the founding of Lucis, a movement to revive the lost civilization of Solheim arose around the Weltham region. Leading the charge was House Aldercat, whose brave deeds brought about the rise of the Niflheim Empire. The Empire built upon Solheim's magic technology and employed it for military use. This new firepower helped the Empire fell its foes, taking Tenebrae in ME359 and Accordo in ME606. As of ME722, under the direction of Emperor Aedilus Aldercat, the Empire is developing new arms fusing Magitek with demons. 
Hmm. Vestiges of the ancient Solheim civilization can still be seen in the ruins of Piteus and Steel of Grove. Several ancient structures also dot the forest of the Fall Grove that encircles Castlemark Tower. Excavation of these various sites is currently underway. We went there with our Renee, remember? In ME 501, during an expedition in the Ulwat region, the Imperial Army discovered a new species known as demons. Okay, let me check that one last, this one. Before we talk to Verstyle. What is this? Demons. Given the demons aversion to light, they typically stick to the shadows until the sun fades and the night falls. Adagium, however, is different. Unlike his demon brethren, he can still function uninhibited in broad daylight. Of course, the ultraviolet rays harm him, much like they would any other demon. Yet his cells regenerate quickly enough to essentially negate the damage. Yeah. It stings. Yeah. Like the light of the sun, perhaps. Yeah. I'd best cover up. Dude, it was such a nice part. Like, I wanted this must all be this how information. The gods feel looking down upon our world. Here we have a model of Imperial territory. It includes our present lands as well as our future acquisitions. Feel free to have a look. Yeah, I looked at it. I love all the lore. Thank you, sir. There's something you should see. Come with me. I found something most interesting on the Rock of Ravito. If my experiment on this specimen succeeds, it might provide the information you've been looking for. This way. Hmm, what did he find? Yeah, he looks like Prompto, right? I mean, V-Style looks like Prompto. Ifrit the Infernium. Ifrit. You subjugated a god and brought him here? He was sound asleep, just like the legend said he'd be, so we put him on ice. Do you think you could turn him into a demon? If you managed to demonify a deity, you could learn truths no mere mortal could ever dream of knowing. You'll access 2,000 years of his memories, and if you can control him, he'll be a weapon of supreme power. It's certainly an enticing offer, isn't it? Just think you could exact sweet revenge through divine retribution. How do you know what I want? I don't, but I know you have no other options. Well, shall we? Dude, this is so cool. Look at it. There's Come a see god the right of there. My Magitech research. This way. The ancient civilization of Solheim, forefathers of our magic technology, once flourished on this land. Had they not incurred the wrath of the gods, they may have remained prosperous to this day. And you wish to restore them to greatness? To surpass them, which is why I need you to lend me your strength. But I'm certain magic technology and demons are the keys to unlocking the door to a new future. Are we going to be fighting something? <sighs> Lucians? But how? Code me squad. Adagium sighted. Initiating Requesting engagement. backup from Nimbus squad. Shutting down communications until all clear. Ah, so you've come to kill me, have you? Or die trying. You will die. Oh, Somnus. God. Take 
Freed, he woke up. He's alive. You must stop him before he destroys everything. Okay, RBY, Royal Retribution. And his cursed kingdom, and burn them all to the ground. <gasps> no, to be king? Yeah, if the line started from Aira, like, did she really die? Aira. to Somnus, you had been chosen to be king. <gasps> I never dreamt he would try to kill you. But he did. <laughs> Somnus fooled everyone so he could usurp the throne. Everything that happened, it's all his fault. No. Listen to me. It's my fault. I'm the one who ruined your future. This was divine retribution uh, for my sins. You've no sins to atone for. Uh, uh, gods! Answer me! Why have you burdened us with this fate? Error! Oh, no! Error! That's right. 
kill her. Put that monster out of its misery, just like I did. I... I can't. My calling is to save lives. <laughs> Just like you saved that innocent man by turning him into a demon. Please, Arden. You must live. I can't. Not without you. <laughs> Come. Why not give the lady what she wants? <laughs> <laughs> Allow me. No! I'll never forgive you, Somnus. This monster may not be able to destroy you, but I'll see to it that I destroy everything you built. <laughs> Hear me, gods above. No longer shall I supplicate you for pardon. No longer shall I sojourn toward the light. Nay. The path I intend to tread is paved with blood and darkness. No longer shall I seek your guidance. This path is mine to tread alone. <laughs> That was terrifying. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, but yeah, his life is very dark, right? The Empire's demonic experiments bore fruit before long, precipitating the production of a Magitek infantry. As recognition for his contribution to this research, Arden Azunia was inaugurated as Imperial Chancellor. Thanks to its newfound firepower, Niflheim managed to break the stalemate that shackled the nation for more than a hundred years, and, in turn, forced Lucis to scale back its magical barrier. The untimely passing of King Mors ushered in the era of a new monarch, and the young Regis Lucis Kylum succeeded the throne. Meanwhile, Arden began to spread the Star Scourge throughout the world, stealing people's memories and learning as much about the kingdom as he could. In time, those memories began to merge with his own, gradually transforming him into a wicked echo of his former self. And now, at long last, the time for his revenge has come. Okay, let me. I think we'll. I think we'll end for now. Yeah, it's been. It's a long. This is gonna be a long episode. Like, we started from Arden. He went into Insomnia, right? And then. What do you call this? We saw his backstory, basically. I love that we. Or we got a lot of lore. Yes, we got a lot of lore. I love that. <laughs> they gave us a lot of lore. Thank you. And. You see, Arden's life is. Like, he wanted to help people first. Then he got betrayed by his brother. Aira died. Basically, his lover. And pretty much messed him up. No, when he came back... Right? I mean, when you saw him, like, talking to Verstyle... Like, it, it looked like... He still wanted to help people. It just looked like that. But then, yeah, that that happened. Uh, that last part, it kind of became crazy now. You saw his eyes, right? <laughs> or maybe I'm just misunderstanding it. But basically, 
what I mean is Arden his life is pretty tragic and that's why he's after he's gonna do his revenge technically but yeah I didn't expect this honestly like I thought he was a bad from the start but no it was Somnus who stole his he was the chosen king Arden but st Somnus stole it his own brother but yeah, we'll continue this in the next episode. We'll, we'll try to learn more, hopefully. And we're probably gonna go and invade Insomnia, right? So he invaded Insomnia like a couple years or yeah, 20, 30 years, I think, before the start of the main story. So this would be, this will be good. This will be good. But goddamn that, but goddamn the ending to this, at least to chapter, what chapter was that? Chapter two or three? Yeah, it was insane when Arden had his all this black goo coming out of his face. It was scary, honestly. So anyways, uh, we'll just continue this in the next episode. Let's see what's going to happen. So I'll just see you then, guys. Bye-bye.